Welcome. In the name of Jesus Christ, the light of the world, I greet you and I welcome you to the service of worship. We've gathered in our homes uh, on Sunday and at different times through the week, and we do so knowing that through the Spirit, we are one in Christ. At this time, I would draw your attention to the life and work of our church, which is found printed in our order of service in the announcements. The announcements, of course, are found in PDF or plain text format on the website, and I would certainly draw them to your attention. Uh, this week, we are continuing to worship exclusively online as a congregation. Uh, as you know, if you've been following the news, things are kind of still a bit unsettled here in Nova Scotia. The Church Council is meeting on Tuesday, and they're going to uh, have a discussion about when we may return to in-person worship. Uh, please keep an eye on our social media and on our website, because as soon uh, as we have a plan in place, uh, we will certainly be letting everyone know. The online services, of course, will continue. Uh, the difference when we return to in-person worship is they'll be up on the website a little later because we'll be taping the Sunday morning service. But again, keep an eye on the, uh, the website and our Facebook account and social media because we'll let you know uh, what the worship schedule will be. Uh, the social justice calendars are available uh, online or if you're interested in one in print, you can be in touch with the church office and we'll make sure that we would get one. The other announcements are as printed, and I certainly would draw them to your attention and action as appropriate. Let's take a moment and prepare ourselves for worship. Please join with me in our call to worship, which is found on your screen. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness has covered the earth, and shadows of worry and weariness have filled our lives. But the Lord has come to shine in our lives, and the glory of God will light our way. Let us pray together. God of grace, breathe your spirit into us this day. Open our hearts that we may feel the breadth and play of your spirit. 
Open our lips that we might drink in the delight and wonder of life. Open our eyes that we might see Christ in friend and stranger. Breathe your spirit into us this day, we pray, so that we might live as your people in the world. Amen. Our epistle reading today comes from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. And Paul was a wonderful teacher. His letters are filled with so many wonderful uh, ideas and thoughts and teachings. But the problem is, sometimes I think Paul got so excited when he was writing, he just put them all in as quickly as he could. And so today, when you hear, uh, Paul will list some of the spiritual gifts that are given. And the truth is, it's a wonderful list and they're beautiful gifts. But sometimes it's a little hard to keep track of what Paul is doing and what's going on. So I have something that helps us to remember, and I'm going to get you to, to watch my hands. Paul says there are different gifts, that they all come from God, and they're all for the common good. And he talks about the gift of wisdom, and that's knowing what to do with things and when to do things. And he talks about the gift of knowledge, which is knowing things, and we certainly see how those gifts go along together. And then he talks about the gift of faith, the gift where we're able to trust and believe and hope in God. And then he talks about the gift of healing. Now, certainly at this time, we understand the healing that our medical folks are able to do for us, but it also includes the healing that happens when someone takes the time to listen to someone else when someone is caring and compassionate in a difficult time. And Paul talks about the gift of miracles because there are people, and honestly I've seen them, who have done just incredible things. We didn't think it could happen and yet they spearheaded an effort or they made the work uh, possible and the miraculous took place. And Paul talks about the gifts of prophecy. When people speak for God, and sometimes we don't want to hear what they have to say, but they're speaking from God and calling us away from bad things and toward good things. And then the miracle of tongues, being able to convey in different languages and in different ways things that are important for us to hear so that people understand. And then the gift of discernment, so that you can understand what's being said and, and hear more than just what the words are saying or the facial expressions are showing. Those are eight gifts that Paul lists, and I know we could add certainly many more to them. But I'm showing them to you this way because it reminds us of these gifts, and it reminds us that they all come from the Spirit. And for the younger folks, I'm making my bird here, they all come from the Spirit. So that it doesn't matter whether you have the gift of knowledge or the wisdom or prophecy or tongues, all comes from the same Spirit. And all of those gifts are given for the same reason. They're all given from God through the Spirit for us to use to build up and enrich and to help the people around us. And I think that's an important message for us to take today. Because we know how difficult life is for a lot of people and how upside down the world has become. And then so it's time for us to use our gifts and to make life better for the people around us to take the gifts that God has given us and to use those things to brighten the lives of others and to show others the grace and the love of Jesus Christ. Why don't we gather our hearts together and pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Our responsive reading is Psalm 36, a wonderful psalm which reminds us of the extent of God's love. Your steadfast love, O God, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mountains, O God. Your judgments are like the great deep. All living things you save. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the waters of your, from the river of your delights. Your For with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. Continue your steadfast love to those who know you and your salvation to the upright in heart. Your steadfast love, o God, extends to the heavens. Reading from the book of Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no longer be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate but you shall be called, my delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. And reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kind of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. And the Gospel of Jesus according to John. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to them, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. And so they took it 
When the chief steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. May Almighty God bless to us a further understanding of these words, and to the name of God be eternal glory and honor and praise. Amen. Jesus changed water into wine. Even people who've never read the Bible or been to church probably know that. But while many know that Jesus changed water into wine, few can say where it took place, why it happened, and the difference it makes. And those things are actually the important parts of the story of the wedding feast at Cana of Galilee. For the final verse of our reading says, Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Because the truth is that while changing water into wine captures our attention, it doesn't have the impact of giving sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, or life to the dying. Which is why the gospel calls what Jesus does a sign rather than a miracle. Because signs are meant to capture our attention and then point us to something greater and open our eyes to something we didn't see before. And here we're told what Jesus does causes the disciples to believe in him. Because Jesus shows them something, not about wine or parties, but about God. Now, I don't want to dismiss the fact that Jesus is at a wedding feast with family and friends and there is eating and drinking. After all, this is a celebration of a wonderful event for a couple, for their families and the whole community. Everyone is having fun enjoying themselves, enjoying each other's company, and to use that old-fashioned phrase, making merry. And this isn't a side note, but it's where Jesus performs the sign which causes the disciples to believe. The wedding feast, where people are happy and rejoicing, is the place where Jesus shows the disciples about God. The last few weeks, I've been asked and I've asked others how the holidays were. And I've noticed that everyone seems to be downplaying what happened during Christmas. Now, I know that the restrictions and fears changed our plans and muted our gatherings, but I also expect that, like me, good things, happy things happened over the holidays. Yet this year, it seems like we're being quiet about those things. It's almost as if we're hesitant to mention anything good amidst all of the bad that's taking place. As if we really shouldn't be enjoying ourselves in the midst of this fifth wave of COVID. Yet in our lesson, Jesus is at a celebration and enjoying himself along with the others. And let me be clear that in that town where the wedding feast happens, there is difficulty. There is fear and worry because they're living in a conquered land occupied by a foreign army. So don't be afraid to embrace the joy you find in these days, and don't be afraid to share that joy. Yes, Christmas may have been quiet, and the winter days ahead may not be filled with everything we want, but I know that there will be joy in our days as well. And as people of faith, let's never ignore or overlook the good that God places in our lives. In our lesson, Mary comes to Jesus to tell him there's a problem with the celebration. The wine has run out. And in this place in the world, in time and history, that's a real problem. First, because the celebration will end early. So the joy will be limited and incomplete and the happy event will be cut short. Second, because this will be a source of shame for the couple and their families. Imagine, if you will, that you've invited guests over for a special dinner, and as they sit down at the table, you realize you don't have enough food for them. That embarrassment, 
multiplied by a whole community is what Mary's concerned about. And what Jesus says to Mary doesn't sound very polite, but the truth is that the original Greek is proper and respectful. And Jesus basically tells her that the time for him to take away troubles to change the world has not yet arrived. His time hasn't come. And even if we're confused by his words, Mary seems to know that he's going to do something because she tells the servants to do whatever he tells them, which is probably a good thing because Jesus instructs them to do something unusual. He tells the servants to take the water jars used for purification and fill them to the top. And the gospel tells us that these jars are 20, 30 gallons apiece. So we're talking about 120, 150 gallons and maybe four or 500 liters of water. And the servants draw some to take to the person in charge of the feast. And that person takes a sip and asks the groom why he saved the best wine for last, because usually people start with the best, and then as time goes on, they draw out the lesser food and drink. And because of Jesus, the celebration continues. Sometimes what we're asked to do by God doesn't sound that important. Pray, be kind, be generous, read the Bible, share and be concerned, learn and grow as Christians. None of that seems to be life-altering or world-changing, and quite honestly, none of it is. No more than the water in those jars was that important they were simply there to allow the purification ritual to be performed. But when Jesus gets a hold of what's in there, he's able to use what's been prepared, and then everything changes. And that's what God does with our actions and our efforts. God takes our prayers and shapes our future. God takes our gifts and allows them to bless others. God takes our time and effort reading scripture to open up for us the better way. So that when we share and are concerned, we grow to be more like Jesus in our lives. So that when we learn and grow in our faith, we became, become the people through whom God transforms lives and our world. Now the servants who draw some of that water have no idea how the water is going to make a difference. And most of the time, we have no idea how our actions can have an impact, and that's where faith comes in. Faith allows us to move forward when we don't know. Faith allows us to carry on when we're unsure, because faith, trusting, believing, and hoping in Jesus, points us toward God and reminds us that God is at work bringing about something even greater. The disciples see what Jesus does with the water, and they believe. They see that Jesus can do incredible things, and that he cares about people. They understand that he can make life better, and they see that the grace that is seen through him is amazing and surprising and bountiful. And they catch a glimpse of even greater things to come. Because it's easy for us in our lives to look back and assume that what was, what we experienced, what we knew, is the best that can ever happen to us. But the good news is that what God is preparing, what is coming next, is even more incredible than anything we've ever known. That's the promise, the hope, the good news of great joy which we hold on to and believe. For yes, Jesus turns water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana of Galilee. But what is important is that that action is a sign, a sign which shows us that God shares in our joys and cares for us in our lives, a sign which reminds us that when we act in faith, God makes a difference in the world, a sign which promises that God is preparing something even greater through the grace and the love that we see in the cross and the empty tomb.
Let us pray. O oh God, Jesus brought the joy into lives that needed hope and a new beginning. We pray this day for all who need a new beginning in 2022. Individuals trying to make a new start, families trying to sort through difficulties, refugees building new homes and new lands, students and teachers beginning a new semester, businesses and groups trying to rebuild in uncertain times. Show each one, show us how much we matter to you and renew courage and resolve so that together we can make a fresh start. O oh God, Jesus performed signs like water into wine to show us that you accomplish extraordinary things through ordinary lives. We pray for all those volunteering their energy and concern to make a difference for others in our communities. We pray for everyone who's trying to manage their responsibilities of work and family in such challenging times. We pray for those working for justice, raising awareness to problems in society, and whose efforts are on behalf of the earth itself. Give us a glimpse of how our hands become your hands, blessed by the Spirit. O oh God, Jesus faced the suffering around him with compassion, reaching out to those in pain and grief with healing and hope. We remember before you those whose lives are wrapped in sorrow or despair, and those facing illness in body and mind, and those who are passing through the valley of the shadow of death. We remember those working in healthcare and all places under stress because of the ongoing COVID pandemic. We remember our friends and family especially those who are burdened by pain or problems that seem to have no end. O oh God, through Jesus and your Holy Spirit, embrace each one of us with your comfort and courage and show us what we can offer to make a difference in the world. For we ask these things and all of our prayers to you as your people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the busy week ahead, do not forget to look for the presence of the Spirit in your work. Do not forget to express your love to those around you. And do not forget that you walk in the grace of God. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and all of your days. Amen. Take care and God bless.